Hello everyone and welcome to this session. Earlier this year, we announced the general availability of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database Management Service for on-premises Oracle databases. We are excited to announce that Database Management Service now supports Oracle databases on bare metal, virtual machines and Exadata cloud service in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. In this session, we'll talk about an overview of what database management service is all about a quick recap. What management options do we have for Oracle Cloud databases? There is an architectural change for Oracle Cloud databases. We look at the architectural change. What are the prerequisites and permissions that so that you can quickly onboard database management service? And then finally, we look at how do we enable database management for Oracle Cloud databases. So here is a quick overview in terms of what database management service is all about. Database management service provides comprehensive Oracle database performance and management capability for all flavors of Oracle databases, including Oracle Cloud and on-premises that significantly reduce the burden on DBAs by providing a full lifecycle solution encompassing monitoring, performance management, tuning, and database administration. Database management is part of the Oracle Cloud Observability and Management Platform. Database management is now available natively in Oracle Cloud as a scalable modern application combined with robust automation, making it truly elastic and reduce the operational cost from a customer perspective. If you're using a database 11.204 and above, you will be able to get a comprehensive view of the performance of your database fleet and along with that, many other administrative capabilities. Database management features for Oracle Cloud databases, which are databases running on co-managed Oracle database cloud solutions, bare metal virtual machines and Exadata cloud service are available as part of two management options. You can select either option when enabling database management. You have full management, this management option includes all database management features for Oracle Database Enterprise Editions. The full management is also available for Oracle Database Standard Edition, but it does not include features like Performance Hub and so on and so forth. For basic management, you get basic metrics, which is 14 basic metrics such as CPU utilization, storage allocated user calls, etc. Ash Analytics and SQL monitoring features in Performance Hub for container databases. Notable that these features are not available for pluggable databases. Here is a quick architecture of how database management service would interact with Oracle Cloud databases. On the left-hand side, you would see Oracle Cloud infrastructure in the VCN and a subnet, which is the customer VCN and the customer subnet, where you have XSCS, bare metal and virtual machine systems from a customer tenancy perspective deployed, and you would have a concept called as private endpoint. The private endpoint represents database management in the VCN on which Oracle Cloud databases can be accessed as a virtual network interface card or a VNIC with private IP address in a subnet of your choice. So essentially, database management service would be residing in a separate tenancy and it would access the databases that resides in customer tenancy via the private endpoint. Database management private endpoint is required to enable communication between database management and your cloud database in a virtual cloud network. Let us understand the prerequisites and permissions. The first prerequisite is to have the database management private endpoint. As we said before, database management private endpoint is its network point of presence in Oracle Cloud Databases VCN, which is part of the customer tenancy or the customer VCN. Private endpoint must be on a subnet in the customer VCN that can communicate with the Oracle database. You can create a maximum of 20 database management private endpoints in your tenancy and a maximum of one private endpoint in a VCN. Once we have enough permissions to create the database management private endpoint, the next thing is to enable the communication between database management and the Oracle Cloud databases. You need to add ingress and egress rules either if they are part of security lists or network security groups. And in order to have that, you should either work with your network administrator or you should have required permissions to add the ingress and egress rules to the security lists or network security groups. For databases running on Oracle Rack and Exadata Cloud Service, 
you should use a scan IP for communicating with the database management service. Now let's have a look at how do we create the private endpoint. You can go to the hamburger menu and within that you would see observability and management. And under database management, you would see administration, which is highlighted here. And if you click on administration, you would be able to go to the database management pages for administration. And within administration, you can click on the private endpoint link. You would choose a compartment of your choice. Right now, there are no private endpoints in the compartment. So this is the database management private endpoint that we are going to create. If you click on the create private endpoint button, you would have a simple workflow which allows you to name your private endpoint. In this case, I have named it as DBMPE. You have a description for your private endpoint. We've already chosen the compartment. We were in the context of the DB management demo compartment. You need to have a VCN and a subnet created. Databases are generally deployed in a private subnet. Private endpoint very much is all about private networks. So you would choose a private subnet. And optionally, if you have a network security group defined, you can add this to a network security group. Now, once you have done that, you would be able to see that under work requests, the private endpoint is successfully created. And the private endpoint has IP addresses as 10.0.1.247 and 10.0.1.24 about the subnet region within the private endpoint information. You could go to the subnet or the VCN by clicking on the link provided. And once you click on the link provided, you can then go to the security list for that particular subnet, wherein you can enable communication between database management and the Oracle Cloud databases. You need to add ingress and egress rules. We saw that there are two private IP addresses as part of the private endpoint. You need to add those two private IP addresses in the ingress rule, and your destination port range would be 1521 because we want to talk to the database. So this is the incoming traffic from the database management private endpoint from these two designated IP addresses that got created. Now the egress rule from the DB management private endpoint to the DBCS or the database cloud service will have a destination IP address as the database private IP address and the destination port range as 1521. And hence you need to have both ingress and egress rules defined to make it more clear, you would add the stateful security rules to a security list to enable communication between a database management private endpoint and a virtual machine DB system or a bare metal or an exadata system in the same subnet in the VCN. Here is an example for the virtual machine DB system. Ingress rule for the VM database system. So this is an ingress rule wherein the virtual machine DB system's private IP address on port number 1521 can receive incoming traffic from the database management private IP addresses. And in our case, we saw there are two private IP addresses that were defined, and this can come from any port. Now the egress rule for database management private endpoint, the database management private IP address from any port can send requests to the DB systems private IP address, which was noted down again from the database details page. And it can send the request to 1521, which is the port on which the listener listens. Now, before you could even proceed ahead with the security rules and creating the private endpoint, you should make sure that you have the proper identity and access management privileges. For accessing database management, you should have permissions on DB management family resource type. For reading database cloud services, you need to have a read permission on the database management in tenancy or in compartment, which is the resource type for your cloud databases. Networking permission for managing the VNX, for using the subnets, for using the network security groups, and using the security lists. Mostly, you might also work with your network administrator for getting these permissions within your VCN. The next important permission is for the Vault service. You need to have manage secret family permissions in compartment where you actually create a Vault. We would understand why this is needed. This is also needed for the database management service to access the passwords that are deposited by you or that you own. So we need to actually read the secret family in compartment where you have created your vault. Beyond that, you also would need 
storage service permissions for the resource type buckets and objects. This is basically needed if you are working with SQL jobs or scheduled jobs. These are the permissions from an IAM perspective or from an OCI perspective. Now from a database perspective, we would need to set the monitoring credentials in the database. As and when the database gets created, you have this user called as the DBSNMP, which is by default locked and the password would be expired. So you need to reset the password. You need to unlock the DBSNMP account. And once you've unlocked and reset the password, you have to use the vault service wherein you deposit your password as a secret in the OCI vault service using an appropriate encryption key. So the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Vault is a managed service that lets you centrally manage the encryption keys that protect your data and the secret credentials that you use to securely access resources. Monitoring credentials are saved as a secret in the vault with an encryption key. Since this is a monitoring user and the metrics has to flow in continuously, you need to author policies for the database management service so that the database management service can read the secret and then talk to the database and collect the metrics and deposit them onto the OCI monitoring service. So this is how the vault service would look like. It would have components like master encryption keys and the secrets. Master encryption key is your encryption key with which you would encrypt your secret and secret is nothing but your credential for monitoring user. Now we need to enable database management service for cloud databases. In DBCS, from bare metal VM and Excel data service, you can navigate to the DB system database, and then you can click on the database name. On the database details page, you would click enable for the label database management under associated services. You then need to provide the required details. Along with that, you can choose between full and basic management. In the case of XSCS, you navigate from bare metal VM and Excel data service, navigate to the Excel data VM cluster, and within that you would navigate to the database and click on the database name on which you want to enable database management. On the database details page, you click enable for the label database management and provide the required data. Along with that, choose between full and basic management. Let's see how we progress through that. Assuming that we are on the virtual machine database under associated services, you can click on enable and that would launch a workflow wherein informations like the database type, the database system, database home, the name of the database and the service are pre-populated because you're coming in the context of the database. And some of them are read only. You're only allowed to change the service name provided if you want to choose a different service name other than the out of the box provided service name by the database cloud service. The next section, you would specify the monitoring user credentials when you enter the database username for the monitoring user. Use an existing secret or create a new secret in case if you've not created a secret. We've already seen that secret is needed for getting the password for the monitoring user. And then you specify the private endpoint information, choosing the appropriate compartment. And then you have the management options where you select between full management and basic management. After providing all these details, you can now click on the enable database management button. And then magically you have your metrics flowing in from the database cloud service via the database management service to the OCI monitoring service. And beyond that, you also have capabilities within the database management, wherein you have fleet monitoring and management, performance diagnostics, and database administration. With database management cloud service, DBS get a unified console for on-premises and cloud databases with lifecycle management capabilities for monitoring, performance management, tuning, and administration. You can use advanced database fleet diagnostics and tuning to troubleshoot issues and optimize performance. You can also optimize SQL with real-time SQL monitoring and simplify database configuration. Database management supports Oracle database version 11, 204, and above. And using database management, you can monitor the key performance and configuration metrics of your fleet of Oracle databases. You can also compare and analyze database metrics over a selected period of time you can use Performance Hub for a single pane of glass view of database performance, which enables you to quickly diagnose performance issues. You can use AWR Explorer to visualize historical performance data from AWR snapshots in easy to interpret charts. You can group your critical Oracle databases 
which reside across compartments into a database group and monitor them. You could also use SQL jobs either in a one-off fashion or scheduled fashion to perform administrative operations on a single Oracle database or a group of databases using the concept of database group. That concludes this session. Thank you for watching. Thank you.